Welcome back fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Strategic Command World War One, and this is the keep you straight the East Front priority first pr first priority um, campaign as opposed to the West Front. And that's why we put an E after Let's Play E. Oh, overwrite. Okay, we already have one, so we'll stick another E on there just to reinforce, just to make sure. Okay. So we are kicking butt down here in Serbia. And we're going to move up to the zone of control and not attack, but we want to put the pressure on the Greeks. Can you not enter? Or is Bulgaria not at war with Ah, huh. I don't know whether that's just a movement limit. Oh, you can only move one hex, so there's maybe a movement limitation. Could be mud weather. I don't know for sure. Ah, huh. okay. Well, come forward. Okay, now. Yeah, let's come down into here. Oh, good hit, good hit. Oh, another good one. Oh, that worked out excellent, most excellent. Okay, you push into here, and then you push up to, well, we want to put pressure on their flanks as well. Now, he is dying for lack of supplies, and yeah, we'll take a single attack if we can to take them out completely. Uh, I think back this way is best. I think we're going to delay until we can better push their mountain fortresses or what's keeping them alive at the moment. Okay, well, mentioning mountain forces, fortresses, let's swap these out here. So now we have them on the front line. You keep marching up here, you keep coming to there. Now, I'm also, my mind is coming back to my somewhat collapsing, oh, that looks like a, uh, that would be a good, oh, we might even be able to retake that, that is, would be damn close. Mm, that ain't gonna happen, okay. It'd be still worth it to try here. Fortunately, just... The new German and Austrian corps are locked into position. Now we are going to fully repair this if we can. Yes, I didn't even have to look to see if I had the MPP. That's just too important. Okay, so they're holding entrenched there. We'll, we'll entrench it. Oh, they can't right now in Innsbruck. Uh, okay, well, our Einzonzo front type battle war. Have fun, bang, bang, boom, boom, here to just keep pressure off of them. And they shattered. Good, 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 good. No, I don't think I'm going to move up even if I could. I'd rather have them, you know, spider to the fly come into my trap more so. 
I'm just moving forward. But yeah, okay. Oh, um. Yeah, that might have been, if it was already up here, useful. I think it could range into Brunak. So let's move you up so that we got the core commander. And I'm, we have enough Germans operating down here, so let's get a, well, not a core commander, but an army commander. All right. All right. Well, let's come back over here. Yeah, see, that would just be a massive loss for us. But you know what we can do here is swap this out. And so that now puts us a 10 strength unit there instead of an 8. And there's still not enough supply to get you to... Back up to 10. Okay, um, you would be a better attack, but we're going to wait on all of these and let's yeah they can afford that okay now down here oh good they did not either weren't able to or just did not okay um boom and boom bitty boom, boom. That was able to do some damage. Okay, well, um, I might as well come up here a bit. I think you'll. No, let's come over here. I think we can. I want to take out that. Wouldn't be a Zeppelin dirigible unit. I don't know. It's more than a blimp, I think. But I don't know. Maybe it was just blimps for the British. But once we shut that down, um, we've got this fairly well done. Okay, now. Ho, oh, we sent off 75 MPP, which is sort of expensive to get this core. But I'm worried about supply in this core. Um, let's move you to here. We can threaten some of these other cities. Uh, hmm. Oh, we can threaten the British here, can't we? Oh, I wasn't even hardly thinking of that. Okay, let's... Oop, oop, oop. Ouch, 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 ouch. Oh. Okay, well, they're going to hold this city. It's not a good enough port to really take anything. Oh, that makes me want to reload, restart. Okay, how much can we get this maxed? Okay, back to 8. That's fine. Okay, now out here we do have this, and I'm going to be okay a little more cautious in my movement and be a little more successful so that we're messing with them here. Okay, you guys, well, let's see about that, and you come down here and see about commerce rating there. Now we did have uh, some nasty nasty oh god oh god can you get back to port without dying? Yes. Okay well you're going to try you're still on silent running mode sneaky sneaky get out our Austrian Navy is just hiding in port, and I have not spent the money to repair the ships. So that is not doing as well. 
Okay, well, let's look at our west front. That's an elite French core there, and we just took a big hit there. Let's, well... And we will swap this out to make sure that we have a strong core on the front line. Now, we're going to keep this guy probably just here. I don't know. Um, I think we're going to use you. I don't know if they do defensive artillery for the cores, but... Okay, let's see if we can kill. Okay, they got some defensive artillery there. Okay, yeah, these guys can still attack, and so they'll be at nine strength. Now it's oh damn, that doesn't have the points to still. Oh, oh well. I wanted to kill that. Well, I guess we could probably do this. Good. Okay. British core is done. Now. We're going to hit with this weaken core. It's going to weaken us. Oh, not that bad. That will allow us to swap here. But we'll attack there with that. And we'll get slightly weakened. And total complete kill. Okay, so we took out two British corps and an elite French corps. Oh, whatever could be sold for the most money. I don't collect. I don't really collect. Yeah. I understand there's a lot of people and, you know, if you if you don't have the passion, you don't want to invest the money in, in having them. I totally get that. Uh, from an intellectual standpoint, but obviously I'm a, a collector. Okay, uh, let's let's come over to here. Okay, hide back out here. Now down here, of course, we have these guys that are going to... Do I even bother? I'm trying to work the way back around to port. Okay, look out at sea out there. Okay, we didn't particularly notice anything. Though I don't know that you would have noticed sea mines. Okay. Now come back to port. Okay, so we have some sea mines for the British to bump into if they come back around here. Well, Toy Jet says he wants the FG-42. A Falsenjäger 42 rifle. Now, I don't know if Toy Jet's still around, but um, is it an early, a mid, or late model FG 42? Do you want? Now, you could obviously say any. True, but if you, if you, and again, don't take money into account. But if which do you like? Because they they changed them considerably over the the course of production. You know, which one would you be wanting to have? Let's 
the history also collecting anything is not my thing I don't have lots of stuff around just to have it oh yeah I I, I know of people like that Lum. Um, obviously it is not me who who is like that but I know of people like that and it's fine it's good for us because that means there's more interesting things for me to collect less competition well let's look at our situation here okay recon it bring back the photographic evidence of where and where and where they are okay you come up to here boom Maybe we'll get it this time. We want Tarnopal back. Okay, um... There we go. Yes, that looks like we'll do this. See, damp. Okay, good. Just as long as we can get in there and occupy that. You come up to there. You're doing reasonably well where you are on that. Sounds like hoarding. Well, organized hoarding, maybe. Okay, come down here. You come up there, you come to here. Oh, lovely. I hate the way this sort of works. I really can't break out that way. Um... Okay, well, let's keep moving you up, moving you up. Okay, let's swap these out here. And no, we can't. Oh, hell. I know we can't then. Okay, what's the supply situation? Okay, so that's all the way down at one and three. I guess it's just mm, seasonal bad weather here or something muddy. Oh, Madsons are nice. Yeah, you know, they're they're nice. I like them. I wouldn't mind having one of those if laws were easier to have them here. 
They're basically impossible to have in California. I'd have to move to another state. Ooh, that looks like a good option to attack. Okay, well, let's hit. And they withdrew, so we're going to come here. Can they get there? No. Can they get there? No. They can move up, but they've already attacked. But you know, cutting off the supply line coming in is worth it. Now we have a core right on the front. Okay, well, let's scout with the destroyers. I think there's a new-built Russian ship, probably done by events, battleship running around. Okay, let's see. Let's find some of our navy that's in better shape. Okay, destroyer for scouting duties. We have another one here. Let's bring up our CL light cruiser. This, the CC is what they call the battle cruiser. But I would normally do BC. Okay, some heavier ships up in here. Getting ready to bomb, possibly bombard that. And we're cutting off supplies by doing all of that so that we've got supplies cut by land, supplies cut by best machine gun ever. Um, I'm not sure which one you're saying that is, Arno. Okay, so we're doing that. We've got our Navy moving around to try to be a little harder to find, though we're often finding the enemy. Hmm. Now, back here, there's some of these units. I don't like this one. I don't think I move so that I can max reinforce. Um, okay, um, yeah, that one we can... Got to keep being able to put people into the sausage grinder. Any of these? Ooh, okay. A detachment? Yeah. We'll give that points. That's a little better. Okay, now. We'll wait till we can do a proper offensive. Oh, do we? Okay, we push there. Yeah, I'm just checking. I still want to really start pushing here, but no. We got Basra. That's useful. Got this. This is 
bad mistake. We're not going to hold out. I knew we weren't going to hold out forever down here, but... I don't know if we should have rushed that Italian. Force. Oh, I wish we hadn't bumped into them. Because it would just hanging out in the desert would have been better. Um... Yeah. Okay, well. Oh, here. Um. Ho, ho. Okay, let's. Let's start marching you down this way. But I wasn't sure if I was going to need that, and I don't think so to get down here. Expecting an Arab revolt any time. Okay, are there any major areas I'm forgetting? Probably a minor, small area, but... Okay. Germany looks like it should be able to purchase some more... ...forces. Do we do a... ...artillery? Hmm, three. You know, I think we're going to do an artillery to go down to the Italian front. Give better defensive positions there. And I think, yeah, replace our lost cavalry corps. So, with Germany productions, those artillery also coming. More rail artillery, more subs, horses, and Bulgarian corps. Austrian Marines in, well, November, we're coming up, and in February, but coming up with a, a Dreadnought, that may help clear out the Adriatic, I don't know, we've sort of failed there, and another, oh, we can maybe build some more Ottoman, let's look at the Ottomans, oh, we're sort of, oh, well, we don't, let's make sure we are on the Ottoman, yeah, okay, ah, uh, let's see, hmm, Railgun? Hmm. See, the railgun, the problem is the rails. We could use it internally here. We get it to Gaza, I guess, but we can't get it forward. And so I think it could range to here, but it can't range to here. And uh, although, you know, I don't. I'm, I'm thankful they put like this on the map, but. I don't know how rail movements really... It would help with supplies, I guess, coming through short distances um, for supply levels. But beyond that, that rail is useless. And there's no real rail out here. So unless we were going to be moving it around here to, you know, fight, I just don't see a good use. Though, of course, I guess we could build it, We you know, um, build a rail gun and then ship it up to the you know west front or something uh, but as in reality it would be the germans building it and the turks manning it uh, yeah i think another core here i'm not sure because I'm hoping we push down here and take these guys out. And then I'm wondering about doing a naval invasion. You know, maybe up to here or some other place. With that. Best machine gun, in my opinion, is the FNMAG. Yes, Arno, that is a an excellent... Excellent machine gun. It... 
I would put that in the top 10 and I'm doing that because you know best machine gun for what but it's a really good general purpose machine gun and so and so that means it can function as a light machine gun if it needs to and that sort of tactical role it can function as a heavy machine gun if it needs to in that tactical role and heavy and light aren't entirely weight dependent i mean they sort of kind of are because a light machine gun the idea is is you want to you know full caliber not a submachine gun but a full caliber machine gun that you want to lightly move it you know quickly quickly reposition it get it to a new position fast whether in the advance or the retreat but switch position so obviously something a little lighter to move around is better so that light now heavy well what really the term would be is sustained fire machine guns and if if you get more than 14.5 you get 15 millimeters and above you start it's starting to be considered a cannon so it'd be an auto cannon so 50 caliber 12.7 definitely can make a heavy machine gun both as in weight of gun and weight of bullet but set up right and the two main ones, the, the American Browning and the Russian Deshka out there. I think there are a few other, well, I know of at least one other that was in a prototype stage recently, you know, recently as in the last 20 years. I don't know if it ever got into series production. There are some other 50 cal things out there. Um, maybe some aircraft modern mounts and whatnot, but um, yeah, 50 cal is an excellent sustained fire as well as just heavy bullets but you know picture you know you're you're fighting you're fighting here now there's some dramatic photos that i'm sure were staged because they're in world war one of you know um whether they be italians or they be austrians you know hanging off the side of cliffs trying to um, you know climb up to new positions. So yeah, there's some acrobatics in mountain warfare But let's stay away from the sort of acrobatics trying to get into impossible positions, but just generally up a hill Okay, you got to hump the big 50 caliber machine gun up the hill Yeah, okay, you can do it. It's probably gonna take at least two people um, Carrying just the main part of the gun let alone the tripod with maybe another two people carrying the tripod, but Okay you get it up there and you, it would be worth getting a few up there because they have great range but once you get it up there what else do you have to do you gotta hump the ammo up there so um you know so every bullet fired is a really a 50 cal bullets heavy so you gotta hump those you gotta get that ammo up to the location and you go well gamer we just fly it in on helicopters well you shoot helicopters down and trucks or um, light ATVs. Yeah, sometimes the light ATV might be able to get into the position, but not always, you know. So it, you got to you gotta reliably think it's something that man's going to carry. So a 30 caliber machine gun still has rather effective range, especially, you know, often the talk, heavy. And part of the heavy element traditionally was a water-cooled jacket, but also, you know, a tripod, and other things that you know sort of to mount it down and of course you can make it heavy by putting sandbags on the feet of the tripod to make it st stable so you can make something heavy so you, what you want to do is so it doesn't move around a lot and it can sustain fire long range well a fn mag or a um, m240 in the american parlance has um you know quick change barrels so you can just have four barrels you know one in the gun and three sitting next to it so that sure that does mean brief breaks and fire you can't just like with a vickers or a maxim gun you can just go turn it on and you know ten thousand rounds later because you literally just keep hooking the ammo belts to each other as they go through the gun you know and they're like 250 round ammo belt you just keep going 10,000 rounds later it's still going da, 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 da. so you can just turn that gun on and it just keeps firing they did a lot of tests early on to sort of you know Sahara Maxim did test you know to sort of prove that yeah you can just turn my gun on and it'll just keep firing all day long you know I think they fired it literally for like the two or three days uh, something like that I remember reading I don't you know 
just constantly. Just they kept somebody and they would swap persons behind it, holding the trigger down, and just kept it going and just kept feeding the ammo just to prove to these guys. Yep, doesn't break, doesn't you know get too hot with the water jacket. Got to keep the water gets you know steam condenses off, refill the water. You can just keep that gun running. Okay, you know so that's truly a continuous thing and with a um, quick change barrel. And reality, you're probably not actually going to keep it constantly running like that. So. With a GPMG, the, the 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 FN, you just swap that that barrel out, have a good tripod, so and it's not quite as heavy to get it up the mountain to to you know get it into position to fire, because we can't really go here on the map, but down here there is uh, I think mostly sort of at peace now, but a bit, been an ongoing mountain warfare going between India and Pakistan up in the mountains, even when it's sort of been. Um, generally peaceful between the two nations along their borders. They've been, you know, occupying different mountain peaks and having helicopters modified to be able to try to operate in super high altitudes to resupply units. And they're just really small man units and they get into positions and periodically they shoot at each other up there. And so it's been sort of this, and again, I don't know if they've been doing it recently as in the last 10 years, but back in the 90s it was sort of an ongoing unstated war that really wasn't so much of a war but periodically they would shoot at each other and periodically someone would die from you know bullets or artillery rounds but more people i think were dying from exposure and falling off the you know the mountains or whatever in their thing so there is still positional mountain warfare that you're you know needing to get the you know it's a slow it's not always you know the tanks the armored fighting vehicles rapidly moving across the field and mo mobility, 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 um, where you want to do so. Like the FNMAG can fill all those roles. They've made special lightweight versions of the gun that use a lot of um, titanium, lightweight titanium parts. And it's really expensive, like makes the gun, I don't know, four times as expensive as a standard FNMAG and they're set up specifically for like special forces units and so i think america has bought some of them um you know and they're, they're small production runs but so everything they can to make that gun as light as practical and almost to the point of being lighter than you want for a you know a machine gun and so it's not something you would want to do to all the guns even if it, you could in a practical sense but so yeah, no, the FNMEG just is 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 damn good and can fill all of the roles that a machine gun, as we, we define machine guns to operate. So Arno, you're you're very close on that. And it, it is very much there at the top of the list. There's a few few more out there. The PK is rather good, but somewhat crude. But uh, I, I think the South Africans sort of came up with a gun that during the apartheid era that's based a bit more on the PK. I forget its designation. And has some really good features to it. Sort of high quality, but I don't think it went into too much production just because the apartheid ends. And so they no longer, and it really has never been gone out there. No, Arno, not today, I don't think. Um, partially because IKB isn't here, but also partially just we're going to probably get this episode done. And, um, you know, I'm talking a lot about other things. I hope interesting to people. Okay, we need a garrison for here. Do we have? No, we don't have the points. Okay, well, um, I know i am sort of been losing the ball here. I know I'm tired. I'm sorry, guys. Both watching live and watching later on, I'm a bit tired. Okay, um... Okay, that's Riga's our main thrust this turn. Okay, um... Let's look at the Navy, make sure that we've moved. We have... We've done stupid things. They need to start heading to sea. Did you get to come back in the port? No, you're still out there. We got ships on our blockade. Okay, we're we're hitting theirs somewhat. Okay, let's let's end the turn here.
Okay, Commander of the Highest Fleet, Admiral Von, Von Pohl. We have a new U-boat section being built. It has been suggested we complete the construction of the Apollo in the Adriatic. Yeah, um, I'm going to do that. Because I have two more U-boats just got deployed to the Baltic. And we've been having very... Combination, I think some of it just bad luck, but also some of it mine. Okay, English cricketer W.G. Grace dies at 67. Don't know who he is. Okay. John Buchan, spy novel, The 39 Steps is published. Oh, okay. I th I'm used to... Okay, I'm used to watching the Alfred Hitchcock 39 Steps, which is set in the interwar period, but I just presume I guess now they set it in the sort of the current period. They make the movie. German shoot nurse Edith Cavill for helping British soldiers to escape. Okay. That could be a shooting offense, even in, like for the Americans and the British. Italian transfers troops from Eritrea to Tobruk. I guess to deal with my badly held or badly managed partisan units down there. Okay, rain, which may be helpful for us. I don't know. Maybe not so much around here. Looks like upgraded Russians are coming to the front. Well, they bumped into my submarines that were trying to hide. You didn't dive and run away? Specifically on silent moving. I, this compared to my other campaign that I'm currently playing this submarine campaign is not going well that was good exchange yes oh, you survived okay well you're gonna retreat back into the desert that was a bit of an ouch Enemy contact. Yeah, I know these guys, if once the enemy gets effectively hunting them down, they're not going to have a real survival chance. See, he should have withdrawn from here and defended back up at Minsk. Because obviously I can, no, may be a bit starvation, I can move some of these units and cut them off. And probably supply better than he can once he's cut off.
Sweden complains of untaunt attacks on their merchantmen. Foreign Minister, diplomatic success in Romania. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're worrying about Romania coming in. We uh, sunk, or yeah, 12 MPPs, 6 MPPs, um, 10 MPPs, um, 5 MPPs. So we've done some reasonably good sinkings of MPPs. Okay. Austro Hungary Marines. Okay, well. I think we need them more desperately up here. So let's, because I would love to take back Brunak and um, maybe eventually even more Toronto. Okay, before we do anything else, let's save this just in case I mess up. I want to check out a few things. Okay, let's see what we can do here. How far into the desert can you run? And, okay, well, we could, okay, how big of it? I just want to see how big max would it be to six. Uh, probably not quite worth it, so cancel. Let's see if we can just run into the desert. Now here, oh, we can actually reinforce here? Cool, we're going to max what we can. Let's just mess with the Italians. It's as much mess with them as try to actually attack anything. Now here, again, how much could we... We were facing against a 10 core, which is 6. That probably isn't very good, so let's run away into the rainy nights. And we'll try to reinforce later on. Okay, now... They're making this too easy here. I don't know what's wrong. Okay. Um, I mean, it's right for us, but... Okay, that went moderately well. Okay, push them out of their... The supply stronghold and allowed us to do that final sort of attack on them. Very good. Very good. Okay, now, now, let's swap these guys out and then let's. I'll just still just eight, but yeah. Hmm. Looks like we might be able to get Brunick back. as we can see here. Okay, well, yeah, I think a core will be better there than a detachment. So I'll shoot at them with the artillery first. Make whatever results we get better. Well, that's looking like the Riga garrison is being ended. 
Alright, we'll move the HQ into Occupy. Well, um, I figured they would be there. I just didn't want to bump into these guys. Uh, get the guys on the railway. First best. Okay, and they've already attacked, so they don't get another attack. But it's pushing on them. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Uh, yeah, maybe a bit weaker in supply, but again, it's pushing. Move you up and you to there. Good job. That coming forward, and there we go. So that is a success in my book. We are all the way up to here now. Now uh, they were able to fully re-enforce that unit. But we have Tarnopal. We have Tarnopal. We have Tarnopal. Na 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 nu nu. So we've basically retaken all lost territory from Austria-Hungary. Oh, they are empty down here. Okay. Not maybe much in the way of supply, but... up to the front to be able to swap out because we get I, I may I don't know if they can retreat out to Vitolia but I presume once we get their next capital we've got them so I mostly just want to be able to attack swap out attack swap out here next time heavily Okay, well, German submarine that's still trying to hide in the hidden dark parts of the ocean. We can do that with. Okay, now. Well, let's move you down to here. You guys keep marching to the front. I just want to maybe get them down to be able to... So probably retreat him out. Who? You know, this cuts him off, and I'm going to put my defenses, now let's rotate like that. Okay, so now he's cut off and we're entrenched. Need to hold the road open there. Good thing I did move that to there. You can move to here, uh, and you can move to here. We'll entrench, yeah, like that. Well, that is pretty good. I mean, this is, yes, yeah, something of a stalemate front, but we are making good progress, I would say, all things considered. Okay. 
Well, I think we're going to end the episode here. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And, of course, I love hearing from you, so please post questions, comments, suggestions, tips. See you next time for more Strategic Command. Well, more historical wargaming. See you then.